This is oddly satisfying for me. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, guys, right here, I'm gonna jump into finishing up some really crazy little mini wings on the front suspension of my Scrappy Cub build. So I finished part of the shape and foam and sanding in a video a couple of weeks back. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and jump back and kind of catch up. I'm gonna pick up where I left off, get these wings built and installed. Along the way, I'm gonna apologize in advance. I kind of got behind on these videos and so they're gonna kind of jump around. I'm gonna try and keep them in a little bit of order, but I was painting parts while I was doing other parts and other parts weren't painted. So there's gonna be a little overlap of stuff you'll see that hasn't come out in the video or was in a past video. I hope you can bear with it because we'll get through the next couple videos and they'll all come back together. So I hope you like it. Let's get back to work. All right guys, here's my mini gear leg wing, airfoil. <laughs> I'm really excited to have little mini wings. Um, anyway, I've got to get them trimmed out. I've got to put the metal frame inside these wings now for the shock mounts and uh, the tire mounts. So since all of it was done in SolidWorks and I 3D modeled it all, I can now make templates. And this paper I printed out and it's absolutely exact. I cut it long, but the bottom I cut exact. And it's got the pass-through bar uh, I used to hold the plastic foam still going through it right now. And then I use that as my alignment to then drag the paper tight and mark. And this is kind of a funny shape. It's because there's several bars coming into one location here, but I can see each one of them. And that allows me to cut a hole and then use a Dremel and chase every one of those funny arcs exactly for how the metal will pass out of the carbon fiber mini wing. So I've got a template for this side. This looks a little funny, but if you think about a computer, it 3D models a flat plane. So this line is this side of the wing, but since the gear leg is raked forward, this line is actually representing that side in a perfect 90 degree plane. So. This is showing kind of an angled across to the back. This is representing the shock mounts, but when I put a template on the other side of the gear leg, I can put a line between the two and the shock mounts will be here. I could get it pretty close that way, but not absolutely perfect. So I've got another template. This template is top down showing the metal frame inside the mini wings so that I've got the structure for the shocks and the gear. And what this is showing, these are the bars that pass through, the holes you saw on the other template over there. This small side of the wing where the tire is has two pass-throughs, but you can see here my shock mounts. So I'll cut out this paper and it's already designed and arced. So when I lay this on the carbon fiber, instead of doing a flat plane looking straight down, I actually did a contoured plane I can set this right on the carbon fiber, trace it around, line up the back edge, the front edge, the two sides, and exactly cut out these little squares where the king shock perches come through the mini wing. So I got that template, that template, a top template, and a bottom template. I'm gonna cut them all out, start punching holes. Once I get all the holes exactly oriented, I'll split the two halves apart, pull out the mold out of the middle, clamshell it onto the metal frame of the suspension. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> anyway, I'm super excited. Everything is fitting perfect. So it doesn't always go that way. Today, it's going that way. So let's get back to work, hope it holds up.
That's oddly satisfying. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's gonna get really stormy. You can hear the thunder already. <laughs> what are you making? A mini wing. <laughs> Somehow I got a magically like blink steel into the middle of this chromoly, but it's not working. <laughs> I've got one <laughs> done. So what I did is I split it, open it up. If you look at this end, you can kind of see where the seam is right here. And it's got, what's great is just a trace. It's really thin of micro filler, kind of close out that joint. It's got all the sanding done. Um, I microed all of this and then sanded it back down. And uh, sometimes you get lucky because <laughs> You think you see traces like this. This little places is where all the clecos were that clamped this end back together. So there's a little bit of wave right there, but out in the field, turned out perfect. The front, the same. There's no micro left, even though I glazed it all and sanded it all off. Um, the bottom, same thing. The seam was right here. Got a little bit right there, but for an all carbon fiber one-off part, that's probably <laughs> up there in my top 10 um, least amount of micro left over after sanding. So I'm really happy with it. It looked so cool when I got it all wet and wiped down that this was going to be a silver part, silver metallic paint, but with all these lines and these crazy rounded curves and shape and the top here, it just looked too cool in carbon fiber. So instead of adding primer and sanding and then building up and painting, um, it's flat enough. I'm gonna go straight carbon fiber. So I'm gonna add carbon fiber, two layers on the edges where I have a seam joint. And that seam, by the way, I made an overlap. So they actually overlap and tongue and groove together. So I've got a big plate on the backside of that joint. So that is really a solid joint and that's all the way around. I did an overlap like this, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add two layers of carbon fiber to the edges where the seams are. And then on the top, I'll add one perfect giant piece and same to the bottom. And this little trace of micro here and there is gonna be buried underneath those layers. So then I'll clear coat it, wet sand it and polish it and we're gonna see all one carbon fiber part, so should turn out really good. I always start with, all right guys, <laughs> but I don't know what else to say, so. All right guys, <laughs> uh, I've got the second mini wing gear leg done, ready to put pill ply on it and finish it up. We already made the part, made the structure, got everything bagged and built and done. What I've now added to it, which I won't bag, I'll just put peel ply on. This is the sacrificial sanding layer. And what I mean by that, typically you'll do the thickness of the carbon fiber you want, and then you'll instantly go to a thick sanding layer painted primer. And as you sand that, if you start to see carbon almost pop through, you'll see the shade change, you'll stop because you don't wanna sand the carbon fiber and lose the structure of the carbon. However, I'm not gonna put a thick painted layer on, which means for me to get it sanded perfect, I need something to sand. If I put primer on here, you don't get to see all black carbon. And this is gonna be a clear coated carbon part, but I want the finish of a body work part. So I had to do the part, bag it, build it, close it in, put micro on it, sand it, get all the little imperfections out. And, I, and there was so little, it actually was a really, really straight part. So I got lucky this, this time. And then once I got that done, I put a new fresh layer of carbon fiber on it. Not because I need the structure, but because now when i am done and I put peel ply and I peel it off, I need to sand and get that mirror perfect finish. 
and it's gonna sand part way through this carbon fiber without losing the strength of the part. So I hope that makes sense. The part's done, I'm super pumped. It was, this, this part was a big job, <laughs> which also makes it that much more rewarding that it's done, both of them are done. So uh, I'm gonna get to work on it, get it closed up. I'll, I left all this carbon running long over all the parts and uh, we'll sand that off later, but let's put on some peel ply. The other one's already dry, sitting over there, totally done. So I'm gonna go do finish sanding on that while this dries up. I'm gonna try and shoot some, shoot some clear on it in the next day or two, so. Lots to do, back to work. All right, I've been sanding for a couple hours straight. Carbon fiber over by my little air vacuum to keep it out of my lungs and wear my mask this time. I'm doing better. <laughs> um, anyway, I've been sanding on the other side of my mini wing gear leg, and uh, I needed a break, so we're opening up a Christmas present. Yeah, we'll get a big piece here. Oh, that's oddly satisfying. <laughs> I think about five, six hours sanding on this one. We got maybe an hour left on that one over there. We're gonna be ready to put clear coat on it. So I <laughs> can't wait to see how this looks. It's got so much shape to it. So I don't know, back to work. I'm super pumped right now. I'm about ready to spray clear on this. It's all sanded. Man, it is a big job. Sanding carbon fiber is such a tough material. But um, it turned out really cool. I was able to put all the seams on the backside. So this top is one giant rat. And so I'm really excited to see the movement of the carbon as it twists around the corners. It should be a really cool look. But you can walk around, see the whole thing. A little dust couple. I got a uh, alcohol, clean it up. But man, it turned out straight. Put some clear on it and then get her on the airplane. Uh, get close. This part, I'm really proud of it, but it is a pain in the butt. I've had to put, between putting the metal frame inside and all the mold work and all these funny angles, it's just very time consuming. I wouldn't say it's hard, it's just taken a ton of time. Um, but one of the challenges, because I don't have any room for any air at all, it's not like I can have a dimple and then just fix it with a little body filler. It's gotta be perfect. And, uh, and I feel like it's gone really well. Um, I actually didn't need anything other than, I've had to uh, sand it and then put a clear coat down and then sand it and use the clear kind of as a prep body filler. And it's so much harder and hard to sand and, and it just it doesn't work if you had any major imperfections. So fortunately, this one's worked out. Um, you can see kind of what it's gonna look like uh, when I get it all clear coated again. But um, I'm, re I'm really happy with it. But I tell you what, paint, just paint, <laughs> it's like a thousand times easier. I wish, I don't wish. <laughs> Uh, sometimes when I'm into it, 10 hours straight sanding, I feel like I wish it was just paint. But when it's done, I think it's gonna be really cool being just raw carbon. Hey guys, this is my first part for Scrappy in a mirrored finish. And I am way pumped. <laughs> it turned out so cool. I love doing mirror finish on carbon. And this one, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pumped. I guess just because it's the first one for Scrappy is now done. 
I got a lot more to do, so let's get back to work. All right, guys, so there's the parts we just made. Got this little hourglass shape to it to save weight. And uh, the tolerance is just enough, it should just tap right in with a little friendly persuasion. Like that. And the reason I've got uh, this done both ways is I got a half inch bolt going through here. And I just want to stabilize it rather than just out on the outer edge here and here for the long bolt that goes through for the gear. I wanted to have it have multiple contact points. So it's going to stabilize with this inside outer, inner, inner, outer. So it'll be four contact points on that bolt. It just eliminates the amount of vibration and play. And anyway, perfect fit. One down, one to go. My first A-arm is going on. <laughs> Could not be more excited. There's so much work to get to here. You gotta put the little isolator bushings in. Alright guys, this is <laughs> the last bolt so far. Gentle rubber mallet is all I've needed. <laughs> Alright guys, I couldn't be happier. I just tightened up all the bolts. I still got grease coming out everywhere. Uh, I built this with uh, virtually zero tolerance on everything. All the welding was in a jig, everything was machined to fit. Every uh, tab on the airframe, I machined spacers to hold them as I welded them in place. So uh, it went together all with a gentle persuasion of a tiny hammer to just align the bolts and then they just slid right in. But what's really awesome is look at this travel. And if I grab this and try and wiggle it, even though I got a three foot leverage arm out here, I can't get any movement at all. I mean, absolutely zero, zero play in this suspension at all. And also, if you look right here, see how the axle stays level to the ground as I go up and down? 
You can see this knuckle travels through this arc. This arc was all designed in the computer for the carbon fiber, but the actual stays perfectly level relative to the travel. So what that allowed me to do, typically a cub has anywhere from five to uh, 10 inches of travel on the suspension. But as the travel goes up and down, the tires lean in and out because the axle is fixed to a single A-arm and welded. And so it gets welded at neutral stance, the average or the placement you normally have it. And then anywhere on a landing, it would either be leaned this way or this way. And also depending on how you adjust your suspension for that day, the tires will lean. What I wanted to do was get 20 inches of travel and I ended up with 20 and a quarter inches of travel while maintaining the tires level. What that does is rather than the tires tucking under the plane at 10 inches of travel, at 20 they would actually lean under the plane like this. And if you landed instead of the suspension trying to move, there'd be too much scrub force and the tire would actually just fold inward and try and pop it off the rim or tear the tire because it would be at 20 inches of travel, the tire would literally be landing on an angle like that and fold the tire under itself. So to get the tire straight, I did a twin A arm so that no matter how much travel, the tires land straight and they don't have to rush outward and fold the tire as it travels. So it was a lot of work. <laughs> I can't wait to give it a shot, but uh, I have 20 inches of travel, 20 and a quarter, not counting the tire movement, all in suspension only, while still maintaining a half inch more prop clearance than a conventional cub um, at full bottom out. So even though I've got 20 and a quarter inches of travel, I used um, that baseline of bottomed out suspension as my guide, and I moved upward to make that happen. That's why the frame had to go so low, was so the A-arms could stay flat and not lean so steep because you have a second problem. If the suspension's coming down really far, not only would the tires be tucked under, but even if you kept the tire straight, if the suspension came down at a steep angle and you hooked your shock to it, when you landed, this, the suspension would jam the frame and it would have very little pressure to push out on the shock. And so what you'd end up doing is loosening the shocks so that when you landed, it could move, but you're still gonna get the first impact load jamming the frame if you have steep A-arms. So what I did is I dropped the belly of the plane really far and made it into a belly pod with a sub uh, pro molly frame in it. Took those ARs from steep, lowered them out, and that was, is what gave me that extra room to get the 20 inches of travel and maintain the correct angles for the shocks to work appropriately. So, blah, that's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> I hope it makes sense. I'm way excited. Really works great. Let's get the other side on. The only thing I can hear back there is some loose cables that aren't hooked up, but I'm pumped. Let's get back to work. <laughs> All right, that's two. I couldn't be happier. So now you can do something extra fun. I purposely put on this shirt because now <laughs> I get to put on these shocks. And I tell you what, King is awesome. I've used him in off-road desert racing vehicles I've built and hill climb machines. And uh, I called him up and told him about this scrappy project and that I needed something custom done. And I'm not gonna tell you all about that part yet, but we did something extra cool with the King Shocks. And uh, the engineers got on the phone with me and they were so awesome and just dove in and we just went piece by piece real quick about exactly what I wanted to do, something unique and different. And we'll dive into that in another video. But uh, two king shocks aside, we're gonna go ahead and put these on, then the brakes, some tires. So <laughs> let's get this thing sitting on its wheels. I am so happy right now. Okay, I'll have to lift the plane up to get these in their little perches. <laughs> One side done. <laughs> Man, that feels good to get on there. All right, so I got another set of shocks to put on. 
want to show you this little part we made. It's just little simple details, but this super lightweight aluminum little part I made, I designed to go right in between here. I'll just gently tap that in. But what that allows me to do is put one bolt and cinch them all together without it trying to bend these metal welted on tabs or brackets. But uh, also if, if I hadn't done this, I'd have had to use some big steel bracket and held a big opening. So little details, saves weight, but I'll slide that in, put these shocks in, we'll be done. This is oddly satisfying for me. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm so pumped. I don't know, there has been so much work to get to this point. From machining all the parts to make the, the ends out on the hubs, the twin A-arm assembly, the geometry to make this angle tie into this angle. So these bars are actually offset where they interact with this three inch pipe. The custom uh, shock mounts, bracketry, uh, Wings, <laughs> mini wings, foam work, carbon fiber work, fabric work, um, everything to tie it all together. It's been months of just things being done on the side. And then for the first time, bolting them all together, everything was welded off in a jig and everything was machined separate. And the bracketry for the shock separate. The shocks weren't even here yet because I had King Custom make them for me and they've got a really cool, unique feature. I'll show in another video. That is so cool what I'm doing with them. But all the parts were done at different times and places. This is the time they were trial fit together. So it went together so good. I left this off so you can kind of see how some of this geometry works. Little details. Carbon fiber wrapping down around here. You can see offset on the bolts. They actually don't line up. They're angled to match the angle on the aircraft so that when this axle goes up and down, it always stays level. But you can kind of see the clearance for the tire, this angle here. This is clearance for the back of the tire and anything that might flip up. I gave it a little more clearance raking away from the back wheel. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this all the little parts, how they chase together, the inserts, the brackets, the internal giant uh, W-Web trust member inside the carbon fiber. Holy crap, <laughs> this is a ton of work. But this is the best day when you get to put it all together and see 10, 15 different things done at different times slide together with the slightest tap of a hammer. This should be, should be really smooth. <laughs> I can't wait to drop it, test it, fly it, run it over some big ruts out in the back country. We got a lot of work to do. Let's get back at it. One more tire to put on. Alaska bush wheels, 35s is what I'm putting on here. I love these things. If you aren't running Alaska bush wheels, you need to give them a shot. I'll tell you what, they suck up the rocks and bumps and let you go places you normally can't go. So I went with the biggest they have, 35s. And uh, Alaska bush wheels, Airframes Alaska, if you wanted to make a set of 37s, 38s. <laughs> no, 35s is perfect. Thank you uh, for making those tires, they're awesome. Anyway, we got a lot done, a lot more to do. I'm talking a lot because I'm just dang excited. <laughs> Let's get to work. <laughs> Come back, Blaine! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is my suspension test. <laughs> Not really. The shocks aren't charged, but this will give you an idea of the movement. <laughs> That's my low rider space right there. <laughs> It just looks extra low because I dropped the belly of the plane so far to be able to do the geometry to make this gear work. <laughs> That's what 20 inches of travel looks like. <laughs> awesome! I can't wait to do some drop tests, 
More importantly, I can't wait to get the plane done and go run it through some ruts on some backcountry strips, or maybe not strips, but some backcountry mountaintops that I've wanted to land on. And uh, I built this to see if we can do it. Hey guys, I'm gonna end the video right here. <laughs> I call it quits um, for the night, but I have a lot more I wanna talk about. Some of you have asked about how much lifting force, so I'll go into how we figured that out and what that is on this upper wing, what it does for me, how it interacts with the shocks. Uh, also, why I went ahead and fabric the lower A-arm. Um, there's two different ways I could have done. I could have left um, the lower A-arm not fabric, fabric and done little airfoils on the back of each of those bars. And it all has to do with whether I wanted more speed or slower flight and the pros and cons to both different ways. I happen to have a little bit of power behind this and I care more about the low end and how the air is gonna interact as I trap the air uh, under this fabric lower A-arm to my giant belly flap. So I'll talk a little bit more about that on another video. Right now, it's dinner time. I'm gonna go grab some dinner with my family and uh, see if I can sneak back out, come back to work. Not sure if that's gonna happen tonight, but uh, I got a lot to do. So I can't wait, let's get to work. We'll go flying.